Hey, it's Matt with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it is Thursday, and it is January 28th. This will be our chart lesson for today, and this is going to wrap it up for a week. No chart lessons on Fridays if you're new, so um, we won't be back till Monday. But this was a this is a really strong trend day. We sold off a little bit in the afternoon, took some of this back, but uh, really from seven o'clock right in here on it was all uphill till one o'clock or so and we had a little bit of a correction into the two o'clock hour of course that continued on but you wouldn't be trading out here anywhere you shouldn't be uh, i don't recommend taking any trades after two o'clock and i won't go over that again today but um, generally you just don't have much time and your brokers gonna kick you out at three so there's nothing wrong with managing a trade after two o'clock just don't take any new new ones after two o'clock that's just my kind of my personal policy on that so um, it's going to take a little bit to go through this but you can see we started out in this steep blue channel it's a little bit too steep generally you want more of a 45 degree angle like this and you can see and this is common don't let a day like this fool you because we get a break and two legs up and then a little correction basically what you got was two legs of correction but this is just too steep and but it's still a good strong trend so all it is is prices kind of fold over a little bit and go into more healthy manageable trend like this and there's really you, you probably want to play some of these trends within the trends and there's some little ranges and so forth so you got to be careful with these there they, I mean there's some as good as as strong as this day was as far as good as a trading day as it was there's still I mean there's a lot of trades here there's more than enough but you had to be a little patient early on especially if you start at seven like me uh, after that there were some stretches in here too like this trade was around nine o'clock or so and then we didn't have another one till 10 30. so they're just i don't you know there's just nothing in here there if you had a different little different signal bar set up you might have had something that i don't see in here but you wouldn't want to take any shorts on this day at all i don't see anything except late in the afternoon when we know we've got a trend working down here and really i played the range on this trade which we'll talk about so i'm going to back out we'll get through this and wrap up our week I have to go way out to make this easier to see. But seven o'clock comes just as we're rounding out down here, and you can see there's just uh, there's not much here. There there's a pullback right here. That's I mean this is a strong trend. When you get strong trends like this, you don't have much option but to enter off the key entry point uh, because you're not going to all your notice how your corrections are very shallow. Even when we corrected here, we just mostly sideways. That's a strong trend, even though it doesn't look like it. And notice how we went sideways. We couldn't even get back to the trend line. Then we're going higher again. So it's a strong trend. It, it just doesn't look like it. So uh, you might have entered here other than the fact that it's right into the high of the day. And, you know, it's just always, without having a lot of room there, it's always dangerous to scalp out. And so uh, and that's a little bit congestive. Uh, I think that's just more sideways correction. It's, it, they're just, it's not necessarily Conject, uh, congestion if you notice there's no real there's not there's the part of congestion that's missing is the small bar with no body or, or very tiny body and you, there, there's some stem and some up down but I think that's what you're seeing there is that's just a correction and it's a very shallow one and that's a really strong move up so you know if you wanted to be a little aggressive you could take that one so we might mark it green but otherwise, you have to see it. I, I wouldn't take these again. These are just, this is just a correction sideways back over to the trend line. And when you see the moves like this, where there's lots of little tiny bars with stems on both sides and the corrections are just very shallow like that, that's a strong trend. But however, the further you get away from the EMA, the more likely we're coming back again at some point. So it gets dangerous entering up here. So unless you get a really good setup, I just don't think it's worth entering. And at that point, it was pretty obvious. Um, I mean, you, you might have known that we had a little room to go. I actually originally had this trend channel a little bit lower right here. And that could still be right. We might have overshot it a little bit there. And those because we came up short here as well. So uh, I think I ended up moving it. But it still fits the, you can see the midline fitting in there really nicely. So, 
this is probably correct the way I originally had it. Um, so you really just don't get another trade here unless you want to be super aggressive. And then, of course, we're moving. We're getting this little correction, which is mostly sideways. You're in this little range, and you get this little failed breakout right here. And uh, I like going long. It's off the midline. Uh, there's a little bit of room back to the EMA. Uh, regardless, you're probably going to come back and t test this high before you go lower, even if you're going lower. And you've already had a break of, if you're looking at this down sloping channel, you've had a little break and a new low. But really, I, I, I think the play, I, I've got that channel on there, but I think the play is this sideways. And you can clearly see that support. And we drop down and it bounces off the EMA or the midline and see this is the second day in a row that my channel gets out of whack and I'm not sure what's going on there somebody says this because we're mistiming our or we're off on our timing or something so um, I, I'm not sure but there's something going on with our toolbar there. And I don't know if it's something to do with our custom toolbar or if it's something to do with Ninja Trader. I'm just not sure. It's kind of odd, though. I'm just going to extend this to the I love this toolbar, but uh, I'm not sure what's going on with that. But anyway, um, I'm going to color that just to make it a little easier to see. And you can see where uh, that turns out to be a pretty nice tray. We run on up. And we actually, this actually probably traps some shorts. People trying to pick tops. You see how it kind of rockets up. And we come back again. You don't really get a setup here. Uh, you wouldn't have had this trend line. It does kind of come back to this trend line. And you can see that. So you might have taken that trade on, based on that. Uh, this being a breakout that fails and comes back. And then you get a little double test there. And you are a little bit away from the EMA. But it's kind of hard to see that. So you might take that trade. I'm going to take that back off. Let's just draw it here. Because I don't want it extending way the heck over there. But you may take that trade for that reason. Just to ride it back to the EMA. Notice how we came back inside. We, we tested a few times and then go higher. And look at that move up though. So if you catch that, this is one that is probably worth... Maybe worth the risk of trying to just ride it back to the EMA because if you catch that, there's an easy runner there, and and that's a, you know, that's a 20-something point move. I mean, there was 110 points between the lows and the highs today, so that's a really big move. But anyway, we turn back down here, and we just start going sideways. Uh, you've got this channel working down, so it makes it a little. Uh, this does break lower than turn and go out the other side, but it's right at the EMA, and you're. Even though you have an overshoot here, you can clearly see that two-tiered channel working down. And maybe it looks like this in the end. And if it does, that makes it all the more risky to go long right there. There is a failure right here that breaks and turns up. But it's right into that trend line. And it's right in the middle. Even if you look at this at a range, it's right in the middle. So in the end, I do believe that uh, you were better off to to forget about this channel and play this range in the end. It's kind of like the early one. So it's almost a repeat pattern. And we're still looking for longs at this point. So I wouldn't take any shorts up here, even though there's a triple test right here. It's, it, they're making higher highs each time. So I don't think I would go short there. But I like going long here. And you might go long right there is where I started at. I got a little ahead of myself there. Uh, but it's a little risky because of that possible trend line. And because if you look at the range, it's right in the middle. Uh, although that doesn't mean you can't take a trade there. It just means it's a little more risky. But the fact that it was an engulfing bar that broke lower and then turned up, it's probably going to trap people. So um, you might take that trade. But this was the better one. Again, it's engulfing bar. I wouldn't wait up here to go long. you gotta, you got to take the 
you know, it breaks lower when it goes out the upside. As long as you got room to scalp out before here, you might take that trade. I wouldn't go short there, even though it works. Then we come back over here and we get a little failed break lower and a nice bullish bar. And there is a second entry long there, which, of course, we don't make sure you hear this. We don't really care about second entries in a range. But if you get a good setup and it happens to be a second entry, pay attention to it because it does, you know, it does add a little bit to it. But you still need other reasons to go long. So I like going long there. And if you catch that one, you got a good move. Normally, I'd tell you if this wasn't such a strong trend day, I would tell you this is not a very good trade. But notice we break out, we try to go lower once, we try to go lower twice. So there's a failed second entry short there. Not only that, it's a first entry, second entry. It is a little congestive, but what's happening is prices are stuck really between this trend line and this midline of this of the blue channel. So that's what's really causing that. And I would expect that because of the uptrend and the fact that this is also off of that trend channel line, or the trend line, that gives it a little more, uh, that leads you to think we're probably going to win out going higher. And then we get a little breakout pull back again that bounces off the trend line. Nice bullish bar. Uh, I made this one green because it's real close to the, the highs of the day. But you may take that trade. It's a little aggressive, but look at it go because, again, you get all these people that try to pick tops, and then they, they, they get all loaded up to the short side, and next thing you know, we're going long. And, and you also get people that that try to trade. What they'll do is they'll try to trade these breakouts, and then they fail and come back and test the breakout area. And it confuses people, and you get a lot of people that will that'll, that'll say hey I was wrong and they load up short and then all of a sudden it's going the other way again and they have to exit and look at you can tell that there were trapped traders here so you probably got shorts trapped and you probably got longs trapped out when it turned down right there and then they realize oh I, was, I had it right to begin with and they jump back in so you kind of get a little of both worlds there so um, that one runs on up and of course we pull back and we're still kind of bouncing along this trend line and really we got one leg up there's a couple of legs in that so if the blue channel is all we get this is probably over but you can clearly see you know if you use these first couple of swings you can clearly see prices working off the midline here of this yellow one so you got to pay attention to it but there's a second entry long right here and Really, we're coming back and testing this level, price level, one more time. So you may take that one. That one's a little aggressive, but when you make the higher low with that big bullish bar, just go long right there, and off it goes. And you can and draw your and you can see there's a little trend channel working up here. I don't let me color that one just so it's a little easier to see. We'll make that one maybe brown. I like this the fact that you can color these because it just makes it a little easier to see the secondary things in there because sometimes they all all these lines kind of run together but notice we're working up you get a break move to a new eye and then we're trading down but again this is a strong trend day we do have a go back to the original blue channel we do have the break and two legs up and there he is they're not quite measured legs but there are two legs up there and you can kind of see that this would have been your target but you can't get up there because the yellow channel is now the one in play. But you don't want to go short here, um, in my opinion. Not yet. And you definitely don't want to go short off the high of the day. You want to get some kind of better setup. And you don't really get anything. And then we're just going sideways. No longs are shorts in there that I see I like. There's a possibility of a breakout pullback short right there. But again... I think you're better to wait and see what happens. And then we just drop down here. We're bouncing along the yellow trend line again. But unfortunately, you don't get a setup. It's too too congestive. We know why, because you're stuck. Your prices are trying to go lower. And there's, they can't get through this trend line. This trend line's holding. Uh, unfortunately, you don't get a real good signal bar to try to ride it back. Plus, you would expect prices to come back and test this breakout again. The real problem with that just backing up a little bit is this could have just moved down a little bit which is probably what happened this is probably more it turns it, it kind of expands a little bit here and it might even be a little higher at this point like right here 
So in my opinion, that's what happens here. The channel just expands. It starts out a little tighter, but by the time it gets to the end, it expands. So we should come back and test that at a very minimum, but off this trend line, we may go higher, but you don't get a setup. And then you can see clearly see over here, you get back and you kind of run into this um, resistance and you don't want to go along there. But finally, we come back and test this a few times. This one's another possibility. There's just not a lot of room there. Now, if you let this break higher and you drop the limit order in there, maybe you go long right there. Um, I'm not crazy about it. Um, um, well, the other problem is that's the inside bar, and that's a good enough reason to skip that one, and that's probably why I didn't mark it originally. So I'm, I'm not going to mark it uh, because this is your signal bar, and that's just an inside bar, and they're not very reliable. So just forget that trade. That's and then of course we run on up and there's just there's no good entry here. You know you're just more sideways. It pops up a little and goes sideways. And and unless you get a really good setup, those are just hard to trade and you just don't get really any really good setups there. And of course we run back down here, but notice this channel working down. You get a close outside, new low, and it bounces. This one's really tempting to go long right here. It is off the key entry point. I think you were better off waiting on a higher low, which comes here. But look at the congestion. There's a failed second entry short here, but now you know it's a range, a little trading range, and you can't go long into that resistance. But finally, you get a little failed breakout, and you got a little room there. So that's where you, I would go long. And you might take this trade. Oops, wrong one. You know, I'm willing to mark it green, but it's just like an upside up down bar. But that is off the key entry point. That is a very strong bullish bar that ca can be counted as a signal bar. There's just not much room back to the EMA. Um, and being that far away, this could just be a pull back to the EMA before we come back and get you, give you that higher low, which we do get the higher low. But by that time, it's just no setup. What you'd like to see is for it to come back give you a higher low down here with plenty of room back to the EMA. Here we're not so worried about the EMA because we're just in a range at this point. As long as you got room to get out by here, you should be good to go. And look at it go. It takes off. Actually, I don't want to do that. I want to do this. And there is um, a higher low here. Again, it's a little bit congestive. Um, and we're, we didn't come back really and test this yet. Uh, we may not, but you're, you're, it's too big a chance that prices might. So uh, we just kind of keep working higher. And then finally, we work back down here. And now you get this. This is a spike up in a channel right here. So this confirms this trend line on the spike and channel. And that's a second entry long there, too. You get a first entry. It actually ticks higher, but... I. That really looks like one leg down, first entry, and then second entry. So I think it's close enough. Regardless, it's confirmation, the bullish bar. It's off the key entry point. It's off the EMA. We kind of just meander higher here. We come back again right here, and that's a second entry, but it's just a very neutral bar. If you had a good signal bar there, go long. It doesn't go very far, but it it's an easy scout before it turns back on you and then it comes back to the key entry point again but again I don't get a very good setup so I wait on the higher low and then finally you get a pretty good setup we don't quite make a new high but again it's plenty for your scalp and then we're selling off here and again you don't want to go short and there's no real long setup here so you just kind of have to sit tight um, there's only one little area here that might Somebody might ask about this. It's a possibility, but you can see that really tight range, and we got you do get a chance to enter near the lows here, uh, and there does appear to be room to scalp out there. So if you took that one, uh, I wouldn't knock you for taking it. And uh, but it actually, you know, it never, it really never triggers, so you're probably not going to take it. But I mean, if you tried to enter right there. Um, I wouldn't fault you for that. So it obviously doesn't trigger. So you, you don't end up with a loser anyway. But uh, 
if it had broke higher there, you'd had a loser. But if it had broke higher, maybe you get your scalp anyway. So, uh, but if you like that setup, I could understand why you liked it, because I like it too. It just never triggers. And we're this actually continues on down, and this it just we just fall out of that trend channel and off we're going to the downside. You run down, and then we're just running across. Um, this is a a possibility, although we made a new high there. We're not back to the trend line, but you can clearly see this range running across here, and we did trade down into it. I think you're better off to wait and see if we get another test, and we finally do, and it is off this main trend line. Nice bearish bar. That's where you want to go short. If you went short here, I mean, it's probably okay to mark that one green because there probably it looks like there probably is enough room to scalp out there. It didn't matter. It went much lower. But the key would be, do you have enough room to scalp out? If you didn't, you got to use a lemon order and you probably don't get filled. But, uh, I mean, you could argue that that's a double test. There's You've got some highs here and you test it once and you test it twice. So, uh, I ended up moving this down. But it, as you can see, I mean, you could say, you could really argue for that. to look like that right there. And then you get a failure out the low side, but you don't want to go long because we're trading down. Now we traded down into this. So uh, so you may take this trade. Of course, if you mark it like this, uh, there's a problem too in that you don't get back to the trend line. Uh, it really doesn't fit well like that. Usually you want to use your closes, but you want to get where you get the most touches using the closes more closes and to me that's right there and that's why I like that one the key is just make sure the fact that it's off that key entry point and off that um, as long as you got even close to have enough room here I'd probably take that trade and there's actually a lower high here on a second entry and it's right before two o'clock and and we're in this downtrend that's off that key entry point I didn't mark that one but that's a you could take that trade as well Because notice what we've done. We've got one leg down, and so you're probably going to get another leg down. And notice the low, first entry, second entry, and that's a strong key entry point. It's been holding all the way down. So you may take that trade. I wouldn't take anything in here, but that one would be okay. And that's what I saw today. Uh, again, there's a lot of trades here. We're over 20 minutes again today. And a lot of volatility, a lot of volume again. So... Just when we thought the market was going to slow down, we're right back to high volatility again. And we have a lot of new people that have been coming in that have only been trading since, you know, COVID came out in March. And, and so this is all they know is the fast market. So when things slow down, they tend to think something's wrong. And But really, for that couple of weeks there, uh, after the first of the year, that was kind of normal for things when things were quiet towards the end of the year. And uh, especially right in the first week or so, a couple of weeks of January, it was just kind of quiet there for a little bit. But that was normal. Uh, this is not normal, even though it feels normal for newer traders. So how long this is going to last? I don't know. I've never seen a year as volatile as 20, uh, 2020 was. Never. I mean, you know, you get periods where you get a few weeks or maybe a month where it gets like that sometimes, but never for as long, for a whole year almost. I've never seen that. That was really something different and unusual. So um, is it here to stay? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe this is the new normal. But we'll just have to see. My guess is it'll slow down again at some point. But anyway, we're, we're 24 minutes or so here. So I'm going to try to wrap it up. I hope you had a good trading week. hope you learned something this week. We'll be back again to do it Monday. I'm done for today. This is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com. And we'll see you next.